On these next uh, several slides, we will be reviewing over the Botany Lab Practical. For roots, make sure that you are able to determine a dicot root from a monocot root. Now, with our roots, we have monocots that will have a um, fibrous root system. And with our fibrous roots, you'll notice that we have many small roots of near equal size. And we can see that right along here. So monocots, fibrous roots. Here we have a dicot root. Uh, this is a tap root. And our dicots have tap roots. Here we have a cross section of a monocot root. And we need to be able to identify the pith. And we need to be able to identify... Um, that this right here is a monocot root. This is a dicot root. We need to be able to look and identify this as a dicot root. We need to be able to identify the xylem and the phloem and the amyloplast. Now the little purple dots that are present are storage starch and that is the amyloplast. When we look at the xylem and the phloem, xylem is red dead. It is typically stained red, and these cells are dead. Our phloem are live cells, and they stain green. So we can see the red dead xylem and the green phloem, and this is a dicot root. With regards to stems, we need to look at a cross section and be able to determine if this is a monocot stem or a dicot stem. Monocot stems are easy to identify because they have the Spider Man faces. So if we see the Spider Man face, then we know that this is a monocot stem. The Spider Man faces are the vascular bundles. So be able to identify vascular bundle and monocot stem. With the dicot stem, you need to be able to look at it and identify dicot stem and the vascular bundles. The vascular bundles here look like nuts. The leaves are the photosynthetic portion of the plant and we do need to review over the leaf venation and we need to look at the, um, the setup of the leaves. Here we have a monocot leaf. Now as we review over the part of the, the leaf, we'll notice that the top is called the adaxal surface. The bottom is our abaxal. The wax covered layer is called the cuticle. The very large bubble shaped cells are the bulliform cells and this helps uh, with wilting of the leaf. We have our um, guard cells with our stomate. We have our vascular bundle and we have our uh, mesophyll. And so because there's only mesophyll and there's not two types, we know that this is a monocot leaf. Here we can see the top of a leaf and we can see the um, stomates and the guard cells. The guard cells being on either side and then the opening there, the stomate. This is a xerophytic leaf. This is the type of leaf that one finds in the desert. Um, with this, we're going to have a very thick cuticle layer. We're going to have sunken in stomatas. That's going to be the key to identifying this as a xerophytic, is that sunken in stomata. And then we will have the plant hairs called trichomes that will reabsorb any of the um, 
water before it escapes through the uh, the guard cells. Here we have a second view of a xerophytic plant. Again, that sunken in stomata with those trichomes to reabsorb any lost water. This is a mesophytic leaf. This is the type of leaves that are in moderate environments such as Tennessee. And um, we do not have any kind of modifications for extreme temperature or water loss. This is a hydrophytic plant. This is a plant that requires very little vascular tissue, so we see a lot of open spaces within here. Uh, these are the plants that are submerged in water. Therefore, these are not concerned about losing water, and so very little vascular tissue, lots of open spaces. Now here we have a dicot leaf. It still has the adaxal and the abaxal surface in our cuticles. But the way we will tell that this is a dicot leaf is because there are two types of mesophyll present. We have these column-shaped mesophyll cells called palisade. And then we have these circular ones, or these right in this area, called spongy mesophyll. And that's how we differentiate between our monocot and our dicot. In addition to the plant kingdom, this lab practical will also cover the fungi kingdom. Here we have Basidiomycetes, or a typical uh, mushroom, where we can see the stalk and the cap. Looking on the underside of the cap, we can see the gills. Here we've taken those gills and we have um, just enlarged these and looked at them under the microscope. And here we have an even closer view. And so we have this club shaped structure called a basidium. And at the end we have four spores called basidiospores. And so this is basidiomycetes because of the clubbed shaped structure that holds the spores. Here we have zygomycetes, which would be typical bread mold. And as we look at it, we can see that the individual strands are going to be called hyphae. And the visible mat is mycelium. Now think of this as being similar to a bath mat. And the individual yarn strands on the bath mat would be called the hyphae. And the bath mat as a whole would be called the mycelium. And then we can see the individual spores. Here we can see the sporangia spore that would be on a typical uh, hyphae. This is ascomycetes. And so here we can see the asca spores. Here we have penicillin which is deuteromycetes, or our um, spongy imperfecta. Why did the algae and the fungus get together? They took a lichen to one another. So lichen is a uh, relationship between an algae and a fungus. There are three types of lichens. There are crustose lichen that's crust-like. There is foliose lichen, which is a smoother, more plant-like. And there is fruticose lichen.